What are your thoughts on here? Tough fight? No, not at all. So the next section, Simon, is how is Madrimov win? Crawford works him out in about 30 seconds and completely dominates uh, I, th- I think it's probably going to be a bit longer than that. Fifth round KO from Madrimov. I'm not sure Madrimov's that good, Simon. Humongous right hand from the guard. And I would expect Madrimov to be well prepared as well. After. Crawford, Dennis, next. Do you know why Crawford wants Canelo? He wants a three three weight undisputed. Welcome back to BoxCast. In this episode, we are going to be uh, looking at the upcoming epic um, event, uh, which is Riyadh season in Los Angeles, with the headline fight being uh, Bud Crawford versus Israel Madrimov. Um, yeah, should I get into a tail of the tape? Mm-hmm. And then we can go from there. So... Terence Crawford is from Omaha, USA. He's got a 40 and 0 record, uh, 40 fights, 31 wins by knockdown. He's age 36. He's 5 foot 8, which is 173 centimeters. He's got a 74 inch reach, which is 188 centimeters. The weight is stepping up in weight to a super welterweight, which is 154 pounds, 69.9 kilos. And he fights out of a, well, both stances, but southpaw and orthodox. He's a switch hitter. Um, Israel Madrimov is an Uzbek. He's got a 10, um, he's had 10 wins and one draw in his 11 fights. He's had seven wins by knockout. He's age 29. He's slightly taller at five foot nine, 174 centimeters, but he's slightly less reach. He's 68.5 inches, 174 centimeters. Well, not slightly, quite a lot less reach. Uh, Same weight, 154, and he fights out of an orthodox stance. Although, again, he's a switch hitter, so he can fight out of both um, um, stances as well. And it's at the BMO Stadium in Los Angeles, the event. Um, And it's for the WBA, sorry, World Super Welterweight, and the vacant WBO Interim World Junior Middleweight Championship. So yeah, Sam, you looking forward to this one? Mm, yeah. In terms of the fight and the event. Yeah, what are your thoughts on here? Tough fight? No. No? You don't think so? No, not at all. For Madrimov or for Crawford? <laughs> for Crawford. Okay. Uh, on why do you think this? How many fights has Madrimov had? 11 at this, but he has got quite a big... Um, um amateur pedigree he's got quite a good record he's quite a good fighter mm. and he's a solid 154 he's not somebody nah. crawford stepping up complete mismatch mm-hmm. as far as they're concerned. saying he's the best fighter at 154 that seems to be that well let me just buy they let me say eddie Hearn, and obviously eddie Hearn is his promoter <laughs> but as you are a fan of eddie Hearn, so well, we are fans of eddie Hearn, so should we take him for his word that he is the best fighter at 150 he really really isn't um but anyway yeah go on why because he's just he's just not um Crawford's gonna have way too much for him I think Crawford has way too much for most fighters. No, he I has, and he's proven that. But he is stepping up in weight. I don't um, think it matters. Not against Madrimov. But yeah, he's had ten fights, seven KOs, one draw. Don't uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I bought a bitch video, I and mean, he's quite good. But, yeah, I can see flaws in a system which we'll go into. For Crawford, uh, it's a great fight to become a four-weight, four-weight world champion. champion. Um, yeah, just let us know if we write that four. Or, it, it's at least four. 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 <laughs> at least four, maybe five. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Oh, go on, carry on. I'll <laughs> check when he's uh, where he actually started. Got yeah, some... he's got a, a Madrimov's got a good amateur pedigree. Um, and he might be like one of the the Lomachenkos and Usyk's, you know, that didn't have many fights, but was superb. But they're going in against a 
Yeah. Pound for pound, number one. Cr- Crawford's won a lightweight, light welterweight and welterweight, so this would yeah, be his three, fourth. Fourth weight. Fourth weight. Uh, and the title. I think... <laughs> I don't know whether Crawford stops him or not. It's, I'd be interested, but I want to know is, is if does Crawford take the power up with him? Well, should we break it down in from we'll break it down from Crawford's side first, innit? What what is the question? The question is basically does he carry his power? I agree. No, there's two questions with Crawford. And age. Yeah. yeah. Although I've seen him a bit of training, he doesn't look like he's age or whatever. Obviously, but, it's only but training. Training is, yeah. you know, Mike Tyson looks phenomenal in training. But you know, you stick him in with any of the... we're whatever, 60 plus, and we look like that. Yeah, but Be happy. No, <laughs> it's, it's completely different. Um, completely different when you're getting punched back in the face. Is it the same, though, if it's a YouTuber against the real boxer? Yeah. Anyway, that's a fight for yeah. another time. <laughs> another. Um, so, obviously, the age catches up with everybody, so that's a question about... You know, he's getting I mean, to the Crawford end of his career. lives a life of boxing, so he, he's very he's off the off the thing and in the ring. He's very clean. He's never yeah. really been like taken to you know had one of those really big struggling fights long that some people have had. It doesn't look like he's heavy wear and that. He's off out of the ring. He's very clean living. He lives boxing. He you know that's his whole thing. So if we take that into account, yeah. But age is still a question because yeah, whatever just, you do, at some point it catches up. I feel sorry for Madrinov because I think this is a a Terence Crawford show. Well, yeah, to he become is the a headline act. No, it's not just that. It's a Terence Crawford show to become the f- a four weight world champion. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like middleweight, isn't it? And. So, so his age and power, I think, is the two things I had in my head as the questions. If he carries his power, if age hasn't slowed him down or anything, you know, it doesn't affect him, he's the usual Crawford, and his power carries, I think then, yeah, then this is a the Crawford show. Because outside of that, I don't think there's a many flaws in Crawford's game. He, The way he adapts, the way he switches, everything else, his defense, his attack, his footwork, his boxing skill... All of that, he's on another level, probably to anybody in this class. And then, but they have said that they've gone for Madrimov because he's the best at this weight. How can you say Madrimov's the best at that weight? That is. Uh, that's what I, I didn't say. I was agreeing. I said that's what they said. No, um, no, no. Because no. he's a big one fifty four. He's a strong lump. He's got a good amateur. He, and he's been quite good in his uh, all his professional fights. They say good things about Madrimov. Um, and he is quite a good fighter. I think he yeah, might be doing a little bit of a disservice. Far more ast- if, you, if you take Crawford out of it, if he was fighting one of the other contenders of 154, I think it's a very, very good fight. Um, because I think with any of them, it's like quite close. Well, I, unless I've missed somebody who's in it, because it's only Charlo. Uh, Charlo doesn't have a belt, does he? Tim Zhu. Yeah, yeah, Virgil Fundora, Ortiz. Virgil <laughs> Fundora, Virgil Ortiz. I think he gives all of them. Mortazaliv. I, I think he gives all of them a good fight. I'm not saying he wins, Simon, but I think he gives him a good fight. Oh, it's like talking I think to Eddie. Uh, uh, yeah. It's like talking to Eddie my, Hearn. My faves in that, if you take Crawford out, is Ortiz, Virgil Ortiz Jr. and Tim Zhu. Um, but obviously he's still got his injury and that's why he's not on the, the card of this. Uh, that fight isn't happening, Virgil Ortiz versus Tim Zhu. So Virgil Ortiz yeah, is I'm got, uh, to, Just quickly, on, I'm gutted over that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that would have made an epic. Really, like, really, I mean, it's really a really good gutted. undercard anyway, but, but it would have been an epic undercard with that fight on um, it. I mean, really epic undercard. It'd probably be the best undercard that they've done in a, a rehad season it, or the best card of fighting altogether. But yeah, okay. We hope that will, I think hopefully he heals properly and I think he will be back because yeah, they're all good. Um, but Madrimov's a lump. He's a good boxer. He's good technically, as most of these sort of ex out of that region part of the world, eastern side ones are. They're taught in the style. They're good. Yeah, he's they solid. are. Um, um, he's got a interesting punching style. I don't know if you've seen. He l- lunges in, which is a bit, which might be just playing into Crawford's hands because I was looking at that and thinking, get sparked and, with an uppercut. And when he does some of his. Um, like movements, he sets them up, but it can become predictable because he uses the same thing. 
he can switch, but it's not obviously as slick as a Crawford or a Boots Ennis or somebody. Uh, he can fight both ways. So I think there's too many weaknesses in his camp. If Crawford age has not slowed him down and, you know, done any damage to his skills and he carries his power and he can push, you know, his power is makes Madrimov respect him. I think there's enough flaws in his in Madrimov's boxing that Crawford will read him and catch him and KO him out. That's my prediction for my prediction is Crawford. Crawford works him out in about 30 seconds and completely dominates I, I him. And it becomes a one-sided prob- beatdown. I think it's probably going to be a bit longer than that no. to put him to work him out. I think it'll take him a few rounds. No, I'm telling you. And then... The, and it'll, I think the corner will pull him out because it'll just be an absolute Somewhere along that, I think it'll be, that it, it'll be stopped. But um, I think he'll, he's done what two other people like Madrimov, where they come in and they get... Because the, he, he's normally like a foot front, um, a fighter who fights on his front foot. So he's not going backwards so much. But Crawford is like, you can see he's, I think he's um, adept at fighting any which way, back, forward, anyway. So I think he will time and work him out and then he will start hitting him. See, Whether he does it as, as quick yeah, as he did to Spence, I, I think he's quite a tough lump. So I don't think he'll do as, get him out of there yeah, as fast. Yeah, it, it most probably is a tough lump, but I don't agree with... Eddie Hearn, I think he's the easiest champion in the division. Well, Ed, it's Eddie Hearn's boy. Yeah, so he thinks he's the best. No, he's From the e- Crawford's side, I think they might be being polite. The, he, I think he's the easiest champion in the division. They said it as well, division. but I think, they, I think he was the, he's the best available and that's no di- disres- Yeah, that's no disrespect to the, Crawford or Madrinoff. Um, Eddie Hearn said he's the best. He says he's going to beat Crawford. At the end of the day, Madrinoff's going to get paid an absolute bomb as well. Um, the thing <laughs> no, I think I think Madrimov's think... got enough that if Crawford lives off his game, Madrimov will give him a good fight. If it's the real Crawford and he carries his power, I think then it is one. I don't side. even it's think he needs to other. carry his power. To be honest, I think he just he could outbox him as well. The, but... Easily, it's easily outboxing him. Mm-hmm. Come on. He's easily going to walk back. I'm not giving Madrinoff. I tell you what, if, Madr- if Madrinoff wins this fight, I will walk down the high street butt naked. <laughs> okay. We're gonna, we've got that on tape, you know. Um, so. <laughs> it's a, it, it's, it's the Crawford show, mm-hmm. and I understand that. And it, Madrinoff, most well, he is the only champion champion available. To be fair. Okay. Um, so the next section, Simon, is how is Madrinoff win? <laughs> So what do you think? If he just caught with Crawford, if he's not fully there. Humongous right hand from the god of thunder. <laughs> um, I'm not sure Madrimov's that good, Simon. <laughs> he's got a big right hand though, he, but he lunges yeah, no, in he with has, it. He has got a big right hand, and, and to be fair. Can, I'm his giving, body I am shots, giving him a little. boxing things are quite good. I think maybe I'm giving him a little bit disservice because of just how good Crawford is. Uh like you say, these Eastern Europeans, they are tough as nuts. They well, we've seen they Brebis are, and Co, haven't it? Like it's just so, the better so be tough. And, uh, and then in boxing, so you've got the Bival and Co, who are a different level of... Do you know what? There'd be worries in fights. I don't think he's that level. No, but there, there's sometimes there's worries in fights where you can become... You know, if you hit someone with the kitchen sink, you just become disheartened. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't think Crawford would get disheartened because he'd be quite happy to go to points. Um, and show off boxing I think, skills. I think he's mature enough. I think age has given him that maturity where he's not, he's seen it all before. Yeah. He's basically every type of style he knows. There's nothing new in what, um, there's, it, there's probably little bits of new in Madrimov, but not like anything completely out there that he won't have seen switch hitters. He won't have seen people who fight like that. Whereas I don't think Madrimov's obviously ever faced anybody like Crawford because there isn't really that many people like Crawford. So, um, but I think it's a tough fight. I think it's it's going to be close. Because Crawford, one of the things, obviously, he is sort of, uh, he's not renowned for, but what he does, he does start slowly because he's while he's trying to work it out. And Madrimov is a pressure sort of front foot fighter. He can put him under that. The problem is you've got to really keep Crawford under, like if you if you want to beat him, I think 
you'd have to keep him on the back foot for 12 rounds and pressurize so he hasn't got time to work you out and i don't think that's that easy no but i don't think the, i don't think he's that good the, and he's gonna work that out the other he thing can do it the other thing is is crawford gonna be on his a game as well well yeah he's gonna want to make a statement um because after this it's it's humongous fight yeah, yeah. like the Errol spence fight was big after this it would be The, the biggest fight of his career, I think, after this fight. Canelo. <laughs> boots tennis. I think it will be boots. Well, I actually seen the thing, but it, I, well, I think we said it in one of our videos. But he's saying it's gonna, they're gonna, if they're gonna make it, it'll be at one fifty four, which is what I thought because I don't think Crawford's gonna yeah, go down. I think it will be boots, but I think boots is big enough to come up with that. Yeah, boots is a big lump, um, but. Well, no, but there's a few at this, isn't it? Because obviously, like we've said, there's Virgil Ortiz Jr., depending on how he comes through his fights. Um, there's um, Tim Zhu, hopefully if he recovers properly, and Sebastian Fandora No, I think Fandora Tim, Tim well. Zhu Fandora have got to fight again before yeah, yeah. Ed, they move well, on But I think there's going to be a few more fights between, um, but there's plenty of people at this weight division that are I do think handy. I think Crawford does want Canelo. Yeah. Um... I think he's going to fight at this division first, so the next few fights will be to get sorted yeah. out this one. Um, thing is, is that, like you say, the, the little, this move up in weight, he's got to be able to take the power of, of these guys as well because it is you're going to get caught a bit, isn't it? I mean, he has got a good um, chin, but like it, it's it's a step up, and most of them are units, you know, and so and, but, they've, like, and they've got big punching power. Like I mean, Madrimov's got Madrimov punching has power. has got punching power. Um, I'm, going, I'm not going to completely write him off but he has got punching power um it's whether crawford can take it yeah yeah well it's catching him and then how crawford takes it isn't it um because he is going to get hit during the fight mm -hmm. um well he got hit by spence as well isn't it by some decent punches he yeah. just is good at rolling with it and taking i think he's got a good chin to take it's whether you catch him cleanly because his defense is normally pretty good but he, that's what I mean. When he's starting slowly, he can be caught if you pressure. Because obviously, if you're pressuring and you're close in, whatever, you can catch anybody, isn't it? It's it's how long it takes him to work him out and time him. I mean, with Spence, he did it faster than I think anybody thought he was going to Yeah, gonna but do like it. you say, Madrov has got like this mad style, you know. He's going to be tricky to work out as well because so he can might be, switch it and he can... It might be one of them where you go, is is that Crawford's kryptonite? That yeah. Madrov style? Um, you know, because I think a lot of most boxers do have a kryptonite, some way or another. Manny Pacquiao's was bloody Juan Manuel well, Marquez, think, and you know, is Crawford it, it's a styles can things and Madrimov's is a bit style. You know, can, it, it, is, yeah, he's awkward. the The funny thing is when he's won the world title, he's gone a bit more like standard whereas i think if he needs the, to fight crawford he actually probably needs to fight a bit more like he f he's fought in his first few fights with that awkward switching changing lunging in that so the distance is harder because it's not a traditional moving your feet in it's uh, whew, superman punches <laughs> um but he's been effective with them uh, yeah but he's only had 10 fights and he, yeah he hasn't fought the caliber of opponent of crawford well so, no sorry he's had what 11 fights 11 ten, fights 10 wins and one draw Hmm. Um, this is a big. This is just trying to give how Madrimov can win. You know, by the way, it's just section. I know, but I just can't. I just don't think there is any way he can win. I really, I, I really think the don't. only way he wins is if Crawford isn't is like you said, doesn't carry the power, um, and his age is caught up with him. And I know promoters are going to sell. And do you know what? Maybe Eddie Hearn's right. Maybe Madrimov is the best champion out there, and he's superb, and he has got that style little. Upset Crawford. Um, Crawford's still going to work him out and knock him out. Because <laughs> although I'm a Crawford fan, I think there's boxers out there that can beat Crawford, you see. Oh, okay. But I don't think Madrinoff's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, Box is like, you know, way heavier or way lighter. Or what no, I think or... Canelo would destroy Crawford. I think Crawford beats Canelo. If you've been smoking. I just wanted to say the opposite oh, of what Jesus you said. Christ. Just why you? Oh, if they were, if they were the same weight, I think Crawford beats him. I think the only people who give him a fight 
if they were all, if you equalize all the weights and they all carry their skills, uh, in a way, Usyk, I think Bivol, um, better be, have you got to have him because he's just until we find out who's the better of them too. Um, Canelo, yeah, you'd get him, but I think he's in his, uh, Ability to switch and read the opponents, I think, and obviously he's got the age of experience. I think he may be able to beat all of them. And how much as I hate to say that about Inouye, because I love Inouye and Usyk. No, but, but just now, at 168, Canelo might be a bit bridge too far. <laughs> yeah, it is a bridge too far. I'm telling you, right now it's a bridge too far. Mm. Canelo knocks him out. Mm. Canelo, Canelo's just way too big for him. Well, I think he's slick enough not to get caught. But the thing and is, I don't, I don't think he's got enough power to knock and he Canelo got, out. And he hasn't got enough power to, to hurt Canelo, I don't think. Yeah, and then if he comes forward, it's, then it's a boxing one. Yeah, can he see, box so for now you long? agreeing with me, you see? You've turned your already. No, no. Um, but in a boxing contest, I know that Crawford is good boxing. He's slick. Yeah, he is slick. Um, and I think it, that that's, I think his slickness is what's going to put win against my mm-hmm. I'd, I'd rather he gets us. He makes he's undisputed at this weight, super welterweight, and then that's it. Calls it a day. Three days undisputed think, champion. I think it takes too long to become undisputed at this weight. It might be. I think it, you know, because I think Fundor ain't fighting till December, is he? Hmm. Well, no, actually saying that the Saudis are involved now, aren't they, with Crawford? So they can just go AR oh, and put the pound note down. Um, I think the Saudis won Ennis Crawford. Yeah, yeah. At 154. Then it makes sense. Yeah. Because uh, I believe the Saudi prince was straight on the phone to Mr. Hearn after the Ennis fight saying, Crawford, Ennis, next. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ennis just said, sign me the contract. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, for him, it's, an, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, even if he loses, it's a no because he can go back to 147 and clean up afterwards. So it doesn't really make too much difference. Obviously, if he wins, then it's a huge <laughs> tick on his resume. Huge, huge resume achievement. I wonder if Madrinov's got a rematch clause. I would doubt it. Mm, you say that. If he's one of Eddie Hearn's boys, Eddie Hearn always throws a rematch clause in, doesn't he? You're saying it's a one-sided contest. Do we really want to see? If it's a close contest. Yeah, but if you start thinking about a pound note. Yeah. But I'm not sure anybody would want to watch it. I mean, like, are we really going to watch it again if just to watch Crawford destroy the other guy? Because in the second fight, Crawford's going to destroy him because he'll know, already know what his yeah, shortcomings but, are. But even if there's a rematch clause and he says, no, we were doing the rematch. I, I, I'm... You've got. To, I would agree with you normally, but I, I think Eddie's light eyes have lit up more does Matty, because he's got Ennis. Yeah, <laughs> so he wants to reach that. But from a mad, mad, right? I'm mad off. You're Crawford. You beat me, okay? Mm-hmm. But there's a rematch clause, and you come to me and say, "Well, I want to fight Ennis next." All right, I'll step aside. Give me ten million. They, they may have a payoff in it, isn't it? I don't think the fight's going to happen. Madrov's in a great Unless position. it's actually a really close fight. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, then maybe. And decision, close decision. Then or maybe. is it going to be an upset? Yeah, yeah. Is well, it that's why I'm trying to build Madrimov up. So the biggest a... upset in boxing. Would it be the biggest upset in boxing if Madrimov won? Mm. I can't go through every fight in my head now, isn't it? So would it be, I'm not sure it would because Crawford's stepping up and it's his first fight at that one. Yeah, But, but it's, you, a, it's a huge upset. Huge. I think it's one of the biggest upsets there is. Yeah. I think a lot of people are like me and have written Madden off. off. Yeah. I don't think uh, Crawford's camp have though. I think they're well prepared. Or they always are. Um... <laughs> And I would expect Madrimov to be well prepared as well. That's his camp, his team is quite Because let's just say Madrimov wins. Mate, he's a superstar. Yeah. Overnight. Oh, he goes overnight, yeah, yeah. Superstar. Um, I will have to rewind this video back. I'm just going to sit there and go, you know when I told you <laughs> he's, the, he's the best in the division? <laughs> you know what I said that? 
Were you listening? Um, he could. Uh, you never know, do you? What can happen? We've seen Stranger Things, so... Um, I mean, he's got the amateur background. He's got the tools to win, except you're against somebody who's exceptional yeah. and working out his opponent, and he changes. It's not like Crawford has one style. I just don't know whether he he's can, got the, the ring IQ at this he, level. He, I think he, that's He hasn't got the ring IQ of Crawford. He has got a good ring IQ. No, yeah, but I don't think he's got a ring... Of, he can't, he's he, only had 10... There's not many people who've got a better ring IQ than Not Crawford. just that, he's only had 11 fights in the professional ranks. Yeah. I don't think he's got the ring IQ. Yeah, he's got a good amateur background. Yeah, he has got the experience. Um, you know, can he drag out a fight, you know, if the going gets tough? Can he go to war? Can he get in the trenches? Um, he will, but it's it's it's. Has I think he got, it, it's the skill level that's going to yeah. be the difference. I think in in terms of fighting spirits, I don't think he's going to be lacking. Yeah, Maybe but has he got? It, it's all well and good. His plan A might be fighting spirit, but has he got a plan B, C, and D? Uh, which is what you need at this yeah, a pound yeah. for pound elite level. You but need it's, it's, different it's plans. It's not having a plan. It's the, the problem is you're fighting somebody who can just adapt. So you can have your plan A, he'll adapt. Plan B, he'll adapt. Plan C, yeah, he'll adapt. That, but that's what... You, as, he probably will have a plan A, B and C. But you've got more. to keep going But Crawford just has plans. more. Yeah, but yeah. that's where you need to unsettle Crawford. Yeah. And I don't if Crawford goes, scene. right, I've worked that one out, then you've got to be going, all right, well, what about if I, do, if I come on the front foot? Or what if about, I'm just going to move to the left constantly and throw jabs, or I'm just going to move to the right constantly and throw crosses? Um, what if I'm just going to target the body constantly? Mm -hmm. He's got to come up with so many different plans to keep Crawford unsettled. Yeah. Has he got that in his arsenal? Because if he just comes in one dimensional with one fixed focus plan, yeah, I think it is going to be an I easy think he's a bit smarter for Crawford. Than that. And I think his um, camp is a bit more experienced than that. So I think Madrimov will have more than that. It's just that I think he's going to run out of plans or switching things because Crawford's just got more. And I don't think Madrim Crawford's had much faster than him. Yeah, yeah. Better footwork, it's, Adam. Yeah, yeah. Better hand speed, better foot footwork, uh, better movement, better defense, better attack. Okay, so let's just things. say we've got, I'll give power to Madrimov. Mm -hmm. I'll give him that. It's robustness and power because uh, he's the natural. But what Crawford big. has in a, which beats power is timing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Crawford's a secret to knockouts. He's got, he's got the one punch, but it's not just one punch power. It's one punch, like, perfect timing power. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Is what, it's, it's like an in a way and a thing where I think he's even better than that. So they've got that thing where they can just time it perfectly, which, you know, and he's a fantastic counter puncher and everything else, which is, I think it's the counter punching that will get Crawford the win because I think Madrimov will be, if they looked at tactics and looked at people who've done well, who do you think? Sean Porter, style of fight. Because he was winning that fight till he got taken till till they said to Crawford but in his corner, make you yeah. lose it. You need to step it up, and then he took him out in the ne next round. Um, Ricky Burns did well against Crawford, but that mm -hmm. was years and years and yeah, years yeah, ago. That's before, and not a lot of people give credit for that fight because Ricky Burns was a, a really good operator. Um, I remember watching that fight, and that's when I. Well, he was the champion that he took the belt off, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, and that's when I really thought, well, this Crawford special because, like I say, it wasn't easy. To, yeah, it wasn't easy it was to beat Scotland, Ricky Burns. He was yeah. a really good fighter. Um, I don't. How, how tall did you say Madrinov was? One sec. He's slightly taller yeah, by an inch, so he's he's five foot nine. He's one centimeter taller, basically. But he's got a, a lot shorter reach. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's a typo. But I to say, what is he like a velociraptor? Well, no, he's like a you know one of those barrel-chested sort of Eastern European builds. Whereas obviously uh, Crawford's <laughs> got the huge like um, arms and hugely long arms. It's little T-Rex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what he is. He's violent though. He's, he's angry like a T-Rex as well. Chihuahua crossed with a T-Rex. Let me just check. Double check the thing. Yeah, yeah, sixty-eight and a half inches. So he's got a basically. Six inch, nearly. That's a lot. Reach Six difference. inch. So 12, 14 centimeter. It's nearly, nearly. It's five and a half inch. Difference. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know. That's a, sometimes reach that's like doesn't matter, size but difference in it. So I, I reckon because so the, the height, I thought he was much taller in it, but like they look about the same. 
So it's like a minor difference. But yet in his reach, his arms are like, because he's got like the shorter, but like bulkier arms. And, you know, Bud's got the like the long lean arms, but like, you know, that much longer on each side. So weird that. Yeah. I thought that was a mistake in our thing, to be honest. <laughs> in our tailor the tape, but yeah. Because I was watching the face off and he does look like that. Because he's like one of those where it's like, but. He's a square, isn't he? He's more square than. Mm. Um, Okay. Rectangular Crawford. Um, like I say, I have watched a couple. I watched this draw against, was it Soto? Mm -hmm. I found it quite boring, to be honest. Um, but I don't know whether that was because he, he... It was controversial, his first win against Soto, wasn't it, apparently? Mm. Well, I think he beat him afterwards, didn't he? No, or, he, be, he beat him. Fought him he beat him and then drew with him to fight after. If I, okay. I, I might be wrong there. Is that because he got a cut or something in it? Let me... I did have it on here. I just remember not being very entertained. He, he is quite a front fighter, and because he's got those big... <laughs> Jumping punches is quite like you come out of nowhere, so he is quite interesting because he's seen one of his left, and when he just he basically ran into the guys on the rope there, and he just he punched like a Superman punch, right yeah. back, and the guys just gone, and he's nearly gone over the ropes because he's carried on for some momentum. I'm like, yeah, okay, this could be interesting because it's unorthodox enough where you think, okay. How do you prepare for that? Because part of partner, he could be doing Superman punches. Um, so it, it's an inter I think it's an interesting fight. I think, yeah, I, I in if if it was Crawford's already settled at that weight, I would say yeah. But I mean, yeah. But the, to be honest, I would say that about the, there is most of the fight. There is questions to be asked. I, you I are think he's up at a similar weight. level to um, uh, um, to uh, Fundora to Ortiz. Well, I've seen less of Ortiz, but you know, from his reputation, a little bit I've seen. And Tim Zhu, I think Tim Zhu, he's the in that bracket of people. I just think Crawford's better than all of them. Because my faves out of them were them, but then I've watched a bit of Mad Mob and think, yeah, he's sort of in there. Um, he has attributes that are slightly different to those three. So you don't know who's going to come out on top, but they, I think that all of them fighting is quite close fights. Um... I agree. He's this type of fight. You'd really want him to be on about 18, 20 fights at least. Yeah, and then you'd be like, "Yeah, yeah. this is a really tough fight." This I think really that's. Thing. I, I, I think that's where Madrimov yeah, falls down I a think little bit. Maybe it's a bit that's early. Where I'm looking at it because I'm going, well, he's only had eleven fights. He's, he's huge. He's got quite a lot. I think he's got three hundred in excess of three hundred or two hundred. He's, like, he's like he's like a Lomachenko, and he yeah. Well, it's all of that lot have loads yeah. of the, even like a Better Beavs and Bivols and co. Uh, but Bivols got less. I think Better Beavs got like they're in the close to three hundred odd amateur, and they only lose like ten eight or whatever. There's only Loma who's only lost one in it, and Usyk I think was four. But I think Better Beavs only like seven or eight or something, isn't it? Um, and Better Beavs beat Usyk in the amateurs. If I he remember. beat him once yeah. and he lost twice. Bum, so it's two one to Usyk. No, had to, put, had to put that in there for our boy music. <laughs> but yeah, it was basically because Better Be was just a beast. So I think in one he caught yeah. him with a body shot or something, isn't it? And then mm. that would level anybody. So um, um, Crawford. Yeah, Versal. See, the problem is you look at all these rankings, and some of them Virgil Ortiz Jr. is the highest rank. Then some of them got Fondora. Some of them have got Tim Zhu, had Tim Zhu on. And then some of them have got a man here. Um isn't Errol Spence in the rankings as well, isn't he? He's still up there. He's in both. Yeah. A welterweight and in thing. Yeah, we, we were going on about the welterweight. He's yeah. in the super welterweight as well. Junior middleweight. Um, he's in both and he hasn't done anything like to be there. I've forgotten our guy's name. Madrimov, isn't it? Madrimov. Madrimov. Let me just do a... Yeah, Israel. Let's see what his thing was. Yeah, it was a head clash. Sorry, cut. That was the second one, and the first one. Yeah, it was quite close, wasn't it? So it's, uh, but then he knocked him out. TKO in the ninth round, mm. and then the rematch. It, he, the headbutts got him the um, technical draw. Yeah, 
He's actually fought heavier as well, isn't he? Uh, Madrimov, he's fought to 160 as well against Raf Rafael Igbokwi. Uh, One-sided, though. <laughs> yeah. Unanimous just, decision um, in 10 rounds. So that's why I said he's a big unit. I, yeah, he is a big unit. Um, I just... <sighs> Class level, I think, yeah. Crawford is... He's the elite of the elite, isn't he? He's in that, like, well, at least, I don't know about yours now because you keep changing it, but like mine in the top three, there's the three amigos. There's him, Usyk, and in a way, who are the best of the best as far as I'm concerned. If Crawford wins this, he goes back into my top three. He's in my top three, whatever. Win, lose, or draw. Or does he? 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 Can I give him enough credit? He goes back to this? number one if he goes. If yeah, he, yeah. Uh, four, I think if he wins. Four, four weight, weight world champion, champion. yeah. Um, Should we do a prediction? Yeah. Should we do? What do you think? And check what round he knocked Spence out in. Right. Ninth, wasn't it? Ninth yeah. or tenth? Ninth. So, um, KO for, uh, KO for, I was going to say KO for Spence, KO for Crawford. Uh, I think round, I'm going to go for round nine. When ninth. I am going to go for. Let's see. <laughs> Like really throw spanner in the way I can say Mad Moss gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> you should do it to the last. After you've been so basically this is not number spat for in Mad Moff to win. We I should do, really have both. No, do you know what? I I do see a massive upset in boxing coming soon. And I don't know whether this is the fight that it's gonna happen. Um Madrimov's got a chance of winning. It's just that like like I said, it depends on what Bud Crawford turns up. If the real Bud Crawford turns up and he carries his power to enough to make Madrimov, no, I'm, I'm going for. I think Crawford's too good. I'm going to go. I think have a, a technical stoppage or a, a point, yeah, point, stop point win for Crawford. Okay. Yeah, point win for Crawford. Our video's just dropped. Um, <laughs> it's just um, yeah, point win for Crawford. Okay, I'll go and for. What would we like to happen? That's our predictions. Madrimov to knock him out in round five. Okay, I want Crawford to win because I want him to be three way undisputed. So fifth round KO for Madrimov. I think a firefight and KO in round. Um, should go short or long? Six. That's what I'd Six like to happen. KO, but in a slugfest where you just see Crawford just you know be better and more accurate. Mm. That's what I'd like to happen. I don't think so. I think it's more likely to predictions. Yeah. Well, I think you've already said what happens if Madrimov wins. He becomes uber star, <laughs> superstar. Oh, like, oh, overnight. mate. It's, it's, <laughs> the kudos then. He, just just, he will like, be the wow, best in the division. Bang, he will uh, be the best in the division. It throws a massive, massive spanner in the works for Crawford. And you're going to be running up the street. <laughs> but making <they can> this <laughs> Yeah. Um, and no, if Crawford I, I wins, then what do you think? Because there's obviously talk of Ennis. No, I, I think the Ennis fight Canelo. will be next. I don't think he'll, he'll be able to turn down the monies the Saudis will offer him. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the Saudis will offer big money for a fight in December against Ennis. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't think there's anyone else in that division well champion I don't, I don't think there's going to be anybody ready this year because I think... Maybe it, the IBF it. champion, what's his name? Is it M Mortazaliv, the Russian? Yeah. Uh, he's the IBF champion, isn't he? Um, I think. I'll bring him up, isn't it? What the, uh... So I do think maybe Ennis is possibly... What is this super welterweight? Isn't it? Yeah. Or just Canelo, but I don't think... I just who's can't... The no who's, the, who's the number one ring rated champion? At the moment. In my opinion... Uh, well, yeah, in your opinion, and I'll tell you who it is on the thing. Go on, in your opinion. Well, it's not ring then, is it? What's your opinion? Who's the number one in that? What, pound for pound? No, no, the ring in super uh, junior middleweight. Oh, super it's be, it'll be someone stupid. 
Like, Jamel Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> He's the ring one. Fondora is number one rated after yeah. him. So Tim Zhu is number two. Madrimov is number three. Boachuk is number four. Boachuk and uh, yeah, see Virgil Ortiz isn't even in it. Junior. He, him and uh, Boachuk are, Bo are going to be fighting. Yeah. And then it's um, yeah, Soro was number nine, isn't he? And there's Mur- Murta Zal- Zaliev. Yeah, I'm sure he's the IBF champion. Let's see what they are. So Madrimov is WBA. Uh, Fondora is WBC. Uh, Bojok is the interim WBC. I don't care about interims. Uh, useful rankings. Why isn't it up under more? Yeah, I've done that one, and I uh, IBF is yeah, background Mutaz Aliyev. Yeah, he's so yeah, maybe that they don't have a one and a two. Then there's Lubin, Tim Zhu, and Lubin's a good which, fighter. Which which Kelly's in the Josh Kelly? Josh Kelly's number five. Uh, is he on the IBF? rankings there's no one or two yeah you see the rbf do have a weird ranking system to be fair um wbc is fundora did i say the other one yeah yeah wbo is fundora he's the unified champion bochuk is the uh interim and then spence jr is number one on the wbc rankings ortiz jr is number two i give up yeah (laughs) it's hilarious this is um Um, no i think like i say and then uh, Madrimov's the WBA with Ortiz Jr. as number one. And then um, Tim Zhu's number five on there. And yeah, they've got their list. And then, anyway, yeah, we can go through. So Charlo's yeah. got to be there somewhere, lad. You know, he's got no belt at the moment, though, has he? No, because he's not on the list of all the things. He's not even on any, any of the other lists. Not even on uh, my list. Yeah, well, yeah, we didn't mention him before, but... Um, so yeah, there's Murtaz Ali of Fundora. Um, He's not going to get any of them champions yet. Well, I think Fundora and maybe Tim Fundora. Zou need to fight. Virgil Ortiz is the other big name. Uh, Virgil Bochuk Ortiz is the only other the other big name if he wins next week. Yeah. Well, he's beaten one of the contenders in it, and then yeah. he'll be an interim champion as well. So, yeah, cool. I think there's mm. enough. I think there's fights there, and Boots Ennis comes in. If he goes to 154, they'll have... I think it makes sense for... Well, it depends on what the sa- fight. thing is, is, like I say, the Saudis are in with Crawford now, so it all depends on what they want for him. Uh, do you reckon that might be one of the ones they make a belt for? <laughs> it's a cool way to launch a belt. <laughs> Possibly. Um, depends when it happens, isn't it? Um, but if they, if it's this year, and well, assuming Crawford comes through this fairly sa- unscathed, the, then, and winning, yeah. then obviously that fight, I think, becomes if, if huge. If Crawford wins... And let's say if, because it is an if. The Saudis are going to get one, one or two fights for him. Canelo or Boots Ennis. Yeah. They're the only and two. And I think the one that is easier to make is Boots Ennis. Yeah. Because you're not, for them, you're not going to have any resistance you know, on Canelo their side to make it. Canelo might say, I want 100 million. But the thing is, is I think the Saudis might call his bluff and say, yeah, go on then. Because I'm not being funny. Canelo Crawford is... Pure. Although it's... From a boxing purist point of view, people would say, I think a few people would be a bit not yeah, agree with Yeah, they're going to be it. a bit like we are, where it's like, wait a minute, it's but a huge size difference, it's all this, To the that, average the boxing fan. It's huge. It's one of the For biggest fights. Boxing it's fans. humongous. Could you imagine the talk about it? It will be massive. It'd be like when Pacquiao for De La Hoya. You can make lots of content. Sorry, yeah. So maybe you should push that one. <laughs> no, it, and it, it will be like when Pacquiao for De La Hoya. The question yeah, was, yeah. you know. No, it's a huge is fight on the two big names, too isn't big it? big for him. And, you know, as Pacquiao. You've got, got the most power. people's pound for pound number one, or at least pound for pound in the top three. Uh, two-time undisputed champion against an undisputed champion. Um you know, and Canelo's the name of boxing, but he's the numero uno name in boxing. Yeah, and he is, Crawford's in that list of the, you know, people. Probably doesn't get the credit he deserves. So, yeah, it's a huge fight. Um, but I think the more realistic fight is a boots Ernest. And I think then, at 154, yeah, I'd want to see Yeah, that. we'll see. And then maybe they might get him to agree as the last fight to go to. Be interesting after. Do, do you know why he wants Crawford? Uh, Crawford wants Canelo. 
It's not money. actually about the money. No, it's not actually about the money or the thing because he's actually got quite a lot of money because he's invested all his money wisely. He doesn't spend on it, yeah. does he? So he's not one of the typical like boxer lifestyle. He's been quite sensible. So he's like, it's not. He wants a three three weight undisputed. <laughs> That's why he wants to fight him because it's in one fight. He can win all yeah. the belts in one fight. And obviously, it's a huge you jump. No, mate, that is a I massive think, jump. I think the other second big. thing. Do you know what? I have a theory. I was thinking about it. Is because obviously Usyk. Obviously, he's only fighting in the class above. You know, it's not obvious. He's fought in the class above. He went from cruiser to heavyweight. But if you think about it, he's like a light heavyweight. You know, not a light heavyweight, but a lighter in weight heavyweight yeah. against the super heavyweight. And really, it's a heavyweight versus a super heavyweight. And then, you know, the, what was it, 40 pounds of difference? Yeah. You know, uh, I think he wants to sort of do a similar level of jump and win all the belts, and then you can go ride off into the sunset. You've done everything because not many people are going to be. I don't think anybody's going to replicate that in terms of like three time undisputed and a thing and in one fight. Because obviously, at this division, the problem is like you've said, it's getting all the belts together is yeah. not the easiest thing in the world. I just think I, th I just think that move up's a little bit too much. I do. I think I said it on one of yeah, our videos. I just think it is a bit, bit too I much. think it's a bit nonsense. I thought it was nonsense until I seen the interview him and he said why. And I thought, okay, right now I understand. No, it's nonsense until the Saudis put the money down and it happens. But Usyk, a man that I have a lot of respect for, said that uh, Crawford prob would probably win. He might have been hit on the head at this point, Simon, though. So maybe take it with a little bit Do you know what, salt. though? I think a few people pick Crawford because I don't think... But it, I think he said he's mates with a man, and he goes as a no, boxer. He rates him as the best. I doesn't think he? I think Canelo's last few, few performances, Canelo's apart too from, solid. Apart the from the Mungia fight, I think before that, Canelo had a couple of fights. Not his fault because a lot of them were just in there to survive. But his performances weren't. Yeah, I think it wasn't. Superb. I wasn't so much him. I think it was the the opponents didn't really. You know, turn. They just turned up for a pay I packet, mean, and, I think, and, and if like you, Charlo. yeah, <laughs> if you ask Canelo, you know, there's always that one way too far. His was light like heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, De La Hoya was middleweight trying to yeah, take yeah. Bernard I, I Hopkins. Agree. I, I don't think. Um, I don't think he needs to go there. The thing is, this I think. Well, we're going to see because it's if, but maybe yeah, at the moment, see how he does at um, th this super welterweight. But if he carries it to there, which he should, if if age hasn't caught up him, then he can clean out that division. I think he is better than all of those. But there's a but it's not an easy fight because it's, all of them are warriors. Yeah, it's not just Ortiz that. is, Tim Zhu is, Fondora is a different like I, he hasn't got time on his side anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem cleaning up, and that's why I think he wanted that fight because one, it's huge. It's like the biggest. If he loses, he loses nothing because most people are going to expect because of the size difference. It doesn't like tarnish his resume. The fact that he takes the fight, I think, that gives him more respect, like increases his resume from the fact of not doing it. Uh, and the fact of losing doesn't diminish the fact that he still fought him and went for it. Yeah. Because I think his resume is then like epic. Um, and then if he does manage to beat him, it's it's like win-win. For, for Crawford, it's a win-win-win. It's a, it's not a win, win, win for Canelo because if he wins, they're going to be like, yeah, but you're the bigger guy. You would have won. He's only got and everything that's why to I lose. Think Canelo, I think that's why Canelo has yeah. just said, yeah, give me 200 million or 100 million or whatever silliness is. It's got to be worthwhile for him to do it. It doesn't make sense for him. Let's be honest. And Canelo really, really doesn't need the money. He, yeah. It's, it's going to tarnish his reputation. It doesn't do, it enhance his reputation. It really, even if he wins, because people will just go, yeah, but he's like three weight divisions or two weight divisions smaller yeah. than you. You know, 20 pounds lighter. But this, you know, everyone's talking of these fights now, aren't they? You know, people are talking about Bam Bam against Inouye. And then Inouye against Tank. And, and then, you're just looking at it going, know, yeah, it's not... Right, let's take care of their division first. Um, but let's see it's what It's a name happens. be name, isn't it? But yeah. like in some of it, it's you can see him catching up. They're fantasy fights. Yeah, they're fantasy fights, and isn't it? There's always as the retirement fight for both of them, it yeah. would be like brilliant to see. There's but always fantasy fights, yeah, yeah. and there always will be fantasy. I fights. think the sensible thing is to stick around there, do his thing, take it because obviously, with, if the Saudis come in and he gets boot tennis, that's a huge fight. Um, and then he'll get one or other of these, and then he's can if he only wants two or three fights there. It is because I don't think anybody else is going to come. Nobody's going to come up lighter other than Ennis because they all know he's too good. And. I don't think he wants to go lighter. At 154, there's enough big fights. Um, because there's one or two people who can either come down or go up. And I think after that, you get into 
to the animals, aren't they? They're too big, too powerful that you're not going to have yeah. your way. See, 160, you could probably do. I think you can go there. But like above that, I don't think so. We'll wait and see. Well, I think you can, but just Canelo's huge. So, mm. and on that note, yeah. So let us know what you think. What about predictions? What we'd like to happen? Do you think, have we underestimated Madrimov? Um, yeah, I didn't. Or overestimated Bud Crawford. I don't think so either. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, the usual goodness. And yeah, we're looking forward to this one. We will see you in the next episode.